Hey everyone and welcome to another replay breakdown and today it's Colonel Mustard with the Kitakaze on Ring of Fire. And like with all my replay breakdowns, I'm going to be pausing the game at various moments to highlight my decision making, uh, why I'm making a play the way I am, and pretty much just to emphasize critical moments in the battle. And the first one is going to be now. The first thing we're going to do is look at the lineup. And the first thing I notice, number one, there's a carrier. And if he wants to make my life hell, he absolutely can. That is totally an option for him. Uh, so the carrier could be an issue. They have one plus one uh, radar. And what, in my mind, what that means, Seattle definitely has it. Edinburgh might. And the, uh, the Edinburgh, you assume he has radar until he proves that he doesn't. And he's going to prove that he doesn't. But I'm still thinking he might have radar. And then all their DDs essentially outspot me. Fletcher's a little closer, but they essentially outspot me. And so going into this cap, I have to take that into account. I have to understand, you know, how much support I have versus how much support they might have. And that will tell me whether or not I should push in or have a plan of action to leave. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and start. I don't feature, uh, I haven't featured a ton of destroyers. I think I've done the Cobb, I think twice or something. But that's really it. And that's more of a cruiser. And cruisers have been kind of my focus, mainly it's because that's what I've been grinding. But destroyers are my best class. I I don't play I haven't played them a lot lately because I've been grinding cruisers and with clan battles I play a cruiser and battleship. And I've played DD a few times in clan battles, but it's hard to play call as a destroyer, so that's why I don't typically play it. But I am gonna start featuring them quite a bit more because I'm enjoying them again. Uh Despite the radar heavy meta, which I actually don't think is that bad. I think that's a bit overblown by people, but that's a video for another day, maybe. But anyway, so I'm pushing into A. I have my Ibuki supporting me. He's a clan mate. And the Akazuki looks like he's going to end up coming down this way, too. But he waited so long in that area, he's not going to be relevant for this early stage. So I'm pushing into A, and my thought is I'm going to turn left and out. I don't want to really turn right and out. Uh, I want to kind of split sections with this Ibuki so that we can that I can maybe give him a crossfire. Uh, but the most important thing is I'm pushing into the cap. It's not contested. I'm not spotted, but I'm still getting ready to turn out. Uh, turning out beforehand and backing in with this ship, I just didn't feel like it was very viable in this situation, which is why I did this. Now I'm detected. And this is kind of big. This is why I'm kind of glad I turned out. I start moving to the edge to back off because I don't know what's out there. I know there's a Seattle moving toward mid. Uh, he's going to struggle to hit me at that range if I'm throttle jockeying. And then the Edinburgh pops up. Now I'm undetected and I'm kind of trying to bait his radar here. I don't really want to leave the cap. I'm actually going to pop my engine boost just to pull back. But keep in mind I was spotted without firing which means there's a DD here. And the Kagero's been spotted on the other side, so it's either the Fletcher or the Shema. And now I'm kind of like, well, I've been kind of sitting in the same spot for a while. It's time to move because Torps are definitely coming. Now, if I was that DD, I would be Torping to the right and left side of this island. The reason being is that would be my most likely exit strategy. But I'm kind of being stingy with losing my position. And I, right now I'm counting Torps. Okay, that's two sets. So it still could be the Fletcher. It's definitely the Shema now. Now, it could have been the Kagero with a reload booster, but since I see the Kagero's on the other side of the map, there's no way he's there. Edinburgh is pushing in, and I'm now within his radar. Well, yeah, I'm within his radar range. 9.1 is the Edinburgh's radar range. I kind of want to torp him, but the Akazuki gets in my line of fire, so that plan is kind of bad. And right now, I kind of want to work with this Akazuki to deal with the Edinburgh. The Buki's coming around the back side of the island. Yamato can't shoot him, so he's going to get shots as well. And boom, Shema gets spotted. Shema's trying to help his teammate now. now. I don't react right away to that, mainly because the Edinburgh is the biggest threat. And judging by... Now, see how this Edinburgh is slowing down? That's telling me he's a smoke Edinburgh. You wouldn't do that if you're a radar. If you're a radar, you'd be trying to get behind that island. You'd give up this cap at this point, or you'd charge just one or the other. He's doing neither. So I'm just going to work this guy down a bit. And now that the Akazuki has left, I'm free to torp. So I'm going to drop right between his two torp spreads. It's a little delayed. If I 
maybe would have got a hit if I dropped this sooner, but I wasn't in position. Now I can. The only reason I popped that spread was because I told my teammate I'm torping on that side of the island if the Edinburgh rushes him. I've, I've communicated with him. If I, I if he was a random, I wouldn't have done, done that set. And now I'm just trying to get as much damage on this Shema as possible. I, my main objective right now is I want to win A. We're outnumbered. Well, we were outnumbered. Now it's even numbers. Two DDs to one cruiser, one DD and a battleship. And if the Yamato wasn't trying to snipe the other side of the broadsides on the other map, which I don't know, he may have been doing a good job of it, he probably could have made a bigger impact on this side or at least made me rethink this objective. But I'm still full in. I want to go. Now, I'm keeping an eye on my smoke timer. And I know when my smoke runs out, the torpedoes will almost be here. So I need to leave. Keep it. I, I know the Shema's reload is around about two minutes, depending on the torps he's using. I think he's using the 12 kilometers. And there's the first set. And I want to beeline as quick as I can out of here and then turn in. Because if he did predict my exit, the torps will be coming to this section. So I want to make sure I'm already turning. And he did a double. He did all of his drops there. That's me counting the torps again. That's all three sets. Now, I'm not shooting the Yamato because my objective is still the same. I want to win A. Shema has used his smoke. He used it around the same time as me, so he'll be getting it back roughly at the same time. Uh, so I can get into this cap, and that's 56 seconds at least before that Shema can act, can foreseeably go into the go in and contest me. He's, he's lost his main form of support in the Edinburgh. I've lost my main support as the Akazuki, but I do have an Ibuki. And what I mean by loss of support, the Akazuki is too far away to be useful. Oh, and I do want to shoot the Shimato. Oh, I absolutely do. But I have to cap this first. The other, uh, the other threat is I am still counting down that Torp as well. And I know that about... Before my smoke ends, his Torp will be up on the next, on the next drop on my next smoke because I intend on smoking and shooting the Shimato. Now, I open water fire on the Yamato. I'm trying to bait the Shima to engage me. He doesn't. Now, this Shima's actually a pretty good player. He plays his Shima very well. I mean, how often do you see Shima's actively contesting caps? Especially against something with the gun power that my ship has. So he kind of realizes it was a bait. And I know Torps are coming. There have to be. I, I waited too long on my smoke. Torps are on their way. He closed the distance. I don't have the time that I used to have. That Shima might have got me if he didn't reveal himself. Now, he didn't shoot me accidentally straight too close. He was trying to get a nice tight spread against me. Now, I'm going to pause it here. No, actually, I want to... Oh, okay, it's not going to show my lines. Right where my crosshair is aiming, if this Yamato guns it and tries to run away from all of us and kites away... That is where he's going to go. So that's where my first drop is. My second drop is going to be to what he commits to. Does he go bow in? Does he try to turn his ship all the way around? Does he try to go out and then go to where my torps were? And there was the commitment right there. He stopped turning. He's trying to bow in. And I think he wants to take on my Ibuki. I'm trying to predict what he's doing, and that's what's going to lead me to land these torps. Uh, I mean, he beached a multiple times, too, and he's still looking across the map. He's not paying attention to the Ibuki. And now I'm just going to farm and farm and farm until I think I might be under Torp threat again. I'm not worried about the Fletcher because he's on the very top side of the map. And I do land three Torps. Now, there was no flooding because he was actively using Damcon there, which is why I'm not switching to AP. These Torps hit very hard. And even the Yamato's torpedo belt probably kept him from being a one-shot for my Ibuki, although he's not in position to deal with them. Uh, a couple fires will definitely guarantee this. I'm not getting much luck on the front, but I'm like, ah, maybe I'll just go for the bow. So I'm aiming for the bow of the ship because that's what I lit on fire earlier. I was hitting a ton of shots in mid and not getting anything, so I'm going for the bow. Plus, it's unsaturated, so I'm actually getting more damage, too. Now I'm going back to the middle of the ship. I get a fire there, he's dead. Although I think my DPM is just going to take care of that. My fire and the DPM is what's going to kill him. So now we're at another critical moment. What do I do next? Our team seems to be winning C. Now the problem with this map is that there tends to be a double lemming train that all converge at C. 
and the team that wins A, and this is why I was so stubborn with staying with A, the team that wins A tends to win the game almost every time because B is so close to A, you essentially get two caps for the price of one, although the price was pretty steep here for their team, and it was it took us a while to win it. But now I'm, my plan, I'm going to go to B. If I can get B, we're good, but I know Torps are on their way. I'm trying to vacate. Um, I estimate they're going to be here in about... 20 to 15 seconds i don't know when he launched it but it was another smoke screen target if the yamato lived longer he may have had a better chance of hitting me here but now uh, if you're thinking about what the shima is going to do would the shima actively harass me now no he doesn't have support anymore he needs to go find support and once he finds support he can re-engage me and he's actually been doing a very good job and there's the torps i predicted almost right on the dot um so now I want to go to B. I want to cap B. I want to either bait that Shema to come out again and try to stop me from capping while I have support. And he's been playing this very well. He's pretty much been, I wouldn't say he's been a thorn in the side, but he's made me adjust my play um, fairly often. So my, my goal is capping B. So our team is now pushing through to C. And the enemy team's now answer is to delay, which they haven't done a very good job of doing that. They've done a decent job of it. And now it's to recoup and win the other side to give them crossfires. That's their best play. So I am expecting ships to be coming this way. Um, but it looks like that Hindenburg and Rune aren't disengaging to get a new angle. They're trying to damage farm, which isn't a bad idea in their situation. I, if I was them, I, I'd... I'd I disengage, get closer, and try to make a shot at B would be my play. But they might be stuck in. Well, no, they don't have a DD actively spotting them, so I don't know why they're being stingy. Taiho doesn't have Concealment Expert. I have no interest in really engaging him. I'll keep him spotted for my Ibuki, though, because my Ibuki does have a line of fire on him. So I'm just going to keep the Taiho spotted for the time being. Their aircraft carrier has been didn't really bother A. If their carrier went to A... I think they would have had a much better chance of winning it. There really wasn't any AA to stop him from doing work over there. And he could have put us in some compromising situations. Now, the Seattle's coming in. I'm thinking about radar. And I'm like, I, can't re I, need, to I need to be moving. And I get spotted again. The Shim has found his support. And the Shim is going to start engaging me. And there's the Shema. So I immediately switch targets. The biggest threat to me is the Seattle. But the Shema needs to die. He's the biggest threat to my team. Shema, the uh, Seattle, no, but he doesn't even get, he even gives a smoke to the Seattle. Unfortunately, I'm too close and the Seattle can't disengage. I'm using the AP here, but as you can see, his ship is pretty much entirely damage saturated, so I'm not getting those super juicy pens. And now I've been forced out of sea. The Shema has essentially forced me out of sea, so now. And I also look at the score, I look at the ships, and I go, yeah, this game's a wrap. Now it's time just to straight up damage farm. And I kind of want to see how this AA looks, because this Taiho is going to try to defend himself. So I'm when, uh, when I'm clicking, when I'm not keeping my guns constant firing, I'm clicking these planes to help my Ibuki. I, th I can't remember if my Ibuki actually has a defensive AI. I'm pretty sure he did. Um, but I think he may have used it earlier. I'm not sure. I don't. I, I wasn't really paying attention to his play. And now I'm just trying to farm the tie home. Get as many hits, get fires, be a pain in the butt. And I'm constantly checking where these planes are dropping things. Cause since I'm kind of focused on shooting him, like right there, I checked back to make sure those weren't coming to me. And I'm, I've only killed one plane. Despite this supposed to be a... Now, I'm not built for AA. Oh, Shema pops up again. Time to shoot Shema. And this time, I think this battle's finally going to end. I've managed my health better than he has. He's been, he's been a, to that guy's credit, he played very well. So he's got the mustard seal of approval. He absolutely played that well. And this game's obviously going to turn into a win. I'm essentially just going to farm these planes as much as I can for some extra XP. And I actually remembered to, uh, after I played the game, I was like, yep, this is a replay breakdown. So I actually do have the end battle results screen. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show that to you guys right now. 
So about 130k damage, four kills, uh, a double strike. I kind of wish I got the Seattle kill now because I'm going to crack it on top of this. would have been nice. The reason the XP and free XP is so high, I'm running pretty much all the flags for it because when I grind a ship, uh, the way I treat tier nines is I always play 20 games in, but I try to get the most XP and stuff out of it early on. That way I'm not using a ton of free XP when I finish those 20 games. Uh, that's just kind of how I treat them. I do the same thing with 8 now that I have so much free XP and stuff. And the credits weren't bad either. So let's go ahead and move on to the next screen. So the team lineup, I was top of the team with uh, 2,409 XP. Uh, the biggest thing about this game wasn't the damage or the XP I got. It was about showing, you know, if we, lo if we lost C, winning A would have been even more important. And typically the team that wins A is the one that wins this game because you get A and B because they're so close. Uh, this, us winning C was just kind of the gravy on the cake and turned this game to a bit of a stomping. As far as the breakdown of my performance, uh, that's how it essentially broke down. I would like to get more armor piercing damage, but I didn't have a ton of opportunities to do it. Um, when HE was just a little more reliable in the situations I was in and getting 40k damage in Torps is a little unusual. Although I am hitting my Torps kind of often in this ship, mainly because I very uh particular about when i use it i want to make sure i at least get one or two hits and when you do i mean that yamato just melted afterward and on to the reward screen so as far as my ship is built i pretty much full-blown xp um uh, i think the only combat flag i had for this battle was one fire chance flag and i've switched that to sierra mike for that increased speed commander xp was great forty-two thousand awesome i didn't have uh, i have a 19 point commander now but at this point i didn't so going for this like hyper grind as much xp as possible thing really helps build the commander xp but that's it for today guys feel free to like share subscribe and uh if you really like the video there is a patreon and paypal that i have i hope you guys enjoyed the video and have a good day